welcome to our doctor scientist hands on science ebook launch at the outset thank you very much for being here for making the time uh, our plans of going to schools during the summer in pune were uh, upturned thanks to something called covid 19 and uh, we ended up having to quite literally think on our feet and we decided to hold a webinar on covid 19 for young minds and we had 75 young people show up and the rest is history we launched it as you know with social media a website and subsequently a youtube channel since march 2020 is nearly 3 years we have over 60 videos on our youtube channel and a, a sizable social media presence and a, a subscriber list on our email of nearly i would say 800 people um all of this was possible of course because we had a journey that they you know talk to scientists took off in some way and see how we tell you how that happened Yes. So when we started in March twenty uh, twenty, we honestly had no idea that we would go on this journey with all the people who joined us in these almost three years now. Um, but we absolutely were overwhelmed by the amount of support we got as we completed ten episodes, our first season. We moved on to, you know, having guest speakers join us, and it has just been absolutely amazing. Uh, what really helped us. uh you know fly uh, really was the india bioscience outreach grant um that we received in october 2020 um and that has allowed us to expand so much and go beyond just you know our own expertise and bring to all of you young minds uh so many guest speakers uh who can talk to you about different topics in science things that you want to hear um and it has also helped us host special episodes um put out activities for all of you and eventually has led us to also make this book that we're all here for today and we also have had various other sources of funding like the american geophysical union sharing science grant that we received the second india bioscience outreach grant that we received um and we've had collaborations with the india science festival in 2022 and now we're launching a book and we promise that we will continue bringing more fun science webinars to you even in 2023 and we already have really exciting plans for that which we will share with you at the end of today sounds good yes we have a surprise lined up at the end of the of the session uh, so the plan for today is we'll introduce you to the ebook we will hear from science professionals who joined us taking their special time out we launch the book show you how to use it how you can access it and then the big surprise the big reveal all right so go ahead sir yeah yes so the doctor of scientist um, hands on science ebook is going to be available on our website it will be free for everybody to download and this is thanks to funding from the india bioscience outreach grant so they really helped us in putting together this book and this is the cover of the book which you will see very shortly again um but we just wanted to show you what it looks like and we're going to flip through some of the pages today and see what it looks like inside as well it has 10 activities for all of you and we'll also see what all these activities are and how you can actually do them at home sounds like fun it was great fun putting book together and this is the team that worked on the book um in addition to snehal and me you know we we've been with tts pretty much right from the beginning uh, we had shriya who joined us as outreach manager funded on the india bioscience outreach grant uh, sushma ambekar worked with us from the united states as a content writer for our sessions and momita mazumdar is the graphic designer who who is behind this the, the illustrations and and the whole book really so momita is here with us Hello, Momita, and we must say Momita is also the science communicator who works with us to edit all our videos uh, and get them uh, in a shape where we maintain the privacy of the young participants who join us. So it's we call ourselves the Fab Five, and it's definitely a matter of pride that the book is you know five Indian women behind the book. All right. Yes. So we wanted to. we were really excited to have dr shantala here with us today from india bioscience um because they've been such an amazing source of support for us uh unfortunately shantala is traveling and she couldn't make it but she wanted to send a quote here um about her thoughts on tts and we thought um we might just share it with all of you and read out what she had to say so karishma do you want to do you want to do that 
So, certainly, Sneha. Thank you. Uh, I'll try and be as animated as I can, bringing Shantala to the meeting. <laughs> so, passion projects are many, but incredibly rare are they executed with the consistency and quality of TTS week after week. In addition to day jobs, which thank you, Shantala, for highlighting that because we forget we have day jobs at times. <laughs> they have engaged young minds with with fascinating discussions of science. It's immediately evident the thought that has gone into putting this book together, a feather in the cap, and the impact of TTS is not only in driving scientific temperament, but inspiring more scientists to take science out of the lab. Uh, she talks on behalf of India Bioscience that we have watched with excitement and pride as you have embodied the spirit of the outreach grant and taken us through your successes. And uh, as a friend and on behalf of the team India Bioscience, onwards and upwards. So, Thank you so much to Shantala for encapsulating quite literally everything TTS has been in the last two and a half years. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Sia. Yeah. All right. And with that, we're going to quickly jump into meeting all our guest speakers and hearing what they have to say um, and share with us about their favorite science moments. So we hope all of you are really excited. Um, and I'm sure they have really wonderful stories to share. So let's just jump right into it and we're going to go to our first guest speaker who is Dr. Smita who also couldn't join us today um, but she has sent us something which Karishma is going to share with us. Yeah. She apologizes that something's come up in Bangalore due to which she can't make it but she said she's very excited and proud of the platform and she will get back to us after the launch. All right. So next we have Professor Surendra. So do you want to introduce yourself, sir, and share with us what story you bought for all the young minds today? We, sorry, sir, we can't hear you. There is not much to introduce about myself, except that I have a very strange surname. Okay. So I, I'm basically a zoologist. I uh, started my education in a place called Abhmanagar, which is about 100 kilometers from Pune. And I was interested in zoology. And at the time, uh, in Ahmednagar College, there was a scientist, Dr. John Barnabas, who used to work on evolution of the hemoglobin molecule. He was a biochemist. And for that uh, purpose, he used to get a number of different animals to the college campus, which was very rare. You know, we had deers and so many different wild, so-called wild animals in the college. And that sort of, uh, there I got the idea that I might want to do something more with animals. So I didn't have any grand plans, but I ended up coming to Pune University uh, in the zoology department and happened to meet one professor, Leela Mullerkar, who was, uh, who established the teaching of developmental biology in India. Developmental biology actually is an area where you study development of an organism. So we begin our development as a single cell, and that is transformed into a three-dimensional organism with trillions of cells. So my first exciting moment was when Professor Mullerkar asked me to get some frog eggs. And I went to uh, uh, find some ponds at a place where Iser stands today. That used to be kind of wild uh, place with a lot of ponds and buffaloes around, and uh, frogs used to breed uh, quite close that time. Now we have to go about 20 kilometers further down to get frog eggs. And when I went there sometime around 3.30 in the morning with a couple of friends, because, uh, you know, frogs lay their eggs and they get fertilized very early in the morning. With the torchlight, we could see uh, eggs with two cells, four cells in the pond itself. And these eggs are in a bunch of about 200, 300 and so on. And then I brought these eggs to the lab and within 24 hours, the individual eggs were converted into a tadpole. So that I thought one of, was one of the most exciting moments. And I just got interested in finding out as to how this single cell is transformed into a tadpole, which can now start eating and developing. So that was one of the things which, uh, by which I started getting interested in developmental biology. Then I also happened to work on different organisms like the snail embryos, the chicken embryo, sponges, hydra, and so on. Then once I started working with an organism like Hydra, about which I, you know, had a session in the TTS, which was very exciting for the students as well as more for me, because there were very embarrassing questions which I could not answer. And that gives us some ideas for some new work. So 
when I cut this hydra into several pieces, each one of them regenerated into a new hydra. So here were instances where a single cell gives rise to an entire organism or cut pieces of an organism gave rise to the entire organism. And these are the things that one wishes to study. There are two aspects to this as far as I'm concerned. Uh, one is scientific curiosity. So when I started this work, I had no I had no inkling that this could be useful. It is still not useful at this stage, but I started it purely out of scientific curiosity. And later on, I realized that it could have implications in regeneration of organs in vitro and so on. I personally don't do that work, but I just study how cells talk to each other. You know, in an organism like us, where there are trillions of cells, they must coordinate so that we can carry out different functions. And that kind of communication is what I'm interested in. And these are two moments that I, I told you, but if, if you miss, there will be excitement almost every day. And I must warn that there will be disappointment also almost every day. So it is a, you know, mixed package, but finally it's very, very interesting. People say that you don't get much money in science, but I don't agree with that. You get enough money to sustain and have comforts in life. But at the same time, you can pursue a, a very serious hobby throughout your life and still be comfortable. So uh, this is what I would like to share with the students. I haven't talked about the TTS program especially, but you know, uh, I have given my feedback and I think it is one of the best initiatives uh, that, can, that has happened in this country. And I was just mentioning to the team that their responsibilities have now increased because our expectations have gone very high now. So thank you very much for having me here and especially to the youngsters who make it a point to attend this. I have seen the book and you will be very, very happy to have it in your, uh, not hand, but in your, on your laptop. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor Gaskar. That was very, uh, very sweet of you to say that about TTS and your, all the testimonials that we received are on our website. So we'll show that in the end. And that was a wonderful story. So, well, uh, uh, I said Pune was obviously started at the correct location. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um. All right. So our next speaker is Dr. Samtha, who also um, has had a session on TTS with us on the zebrafish model, if all of you remember, which also was a very, very popular um, and exciting session. So thank you for joining us, Samtha, and over to you. Uh, thanks so much, Neil. Uh, I first of all want to congratulate the TTAS team and the Fab Five for uh, this book launch. And uh, I am very, very, you know, I'm still overwhelmed that I'm sharing the dais with all these people. So thank you so much for inviting me. And so uh, I thought I'd talk today about what outreach means to me. And of course, how TTAS, uh, TTAS has changed that for me and how it has influenced me. Um, so first of all, I still cannot wrap my head around the fact that you have been doing this for three years almost every single week. How do you do that? Like people have lives, but how do you do that? And I'm just in so much of awe and I'm so happy to see the growth this uh, team has taken and I look forward to all the things you're going to do. So uh, like Pro Professor Gaskar, we said that uh, science is not only every day, you know, happy, happy experiments. So I have discovered that from the beginning, from my from my first experiment, which I did as a 12th standard student growing cabbages at home. But uh, during my PhD, especially, I thought uh, uh, I was always doing experiments. If they were not working, there were these open days we had where uh, we had to do outreach to school students. So every time there was an open day, I was re-energized to do my work because every time new students walk in and ask questions, I sort of see the magic in my science again. So I think for me, outreach was always, you know, a source of, uh, you know, energy and inspiration. And so when uh, Snail and uh, Karishma, both of them invited me to give a talk, uh, I, at first I wasn't sure because zebrafish is something I show the, uh, you know, show the kids. They see it moving, they see the embryos. So I didn't know how to show. 
show that and then you know show it on an online platform so then i went ahead with uh, my uh, colleague uh, shrashti and we sort of captured the entire zebrafish facility and uh, i think like again like professor gaskar we said i had so many questions in the session that i was so it was such a you know great experience to just uh, you know explain zebrafish to the kids at uh, this platform but then it it went to a next level when my video was uploaded to youtube and a few months back somebody reached out to me uh, saying that they have seen my video and their 8 year old kid who uh, really likes genetics is you no know, uh, he's really you know inspired by my video and he wants to see the fish so then i had this uh, kid flow uh, you know come come over to uh, the institute just after i had you know, finished my phd at, the, at that time before i was coming back home there was uh, the kid came over and i spent half a day with him he had these brilliant questions in fact he was asking questions which we ask our trainees he had asked such high level questions i was telling his mother that this is like i am really really privileged to you know interact with such a child and i got that opportunity because of you know speaking at tts and as long as that video is up on youtube i think uh my reach is so big because of being associated with this team and uh, thank you so much for giving me that kind of a reach and i wish all the best for this team uh, and i keep you know i want to see this team grow uh, over and over and i look forward to see uh, i look forward to see the response for this book from uh, everybody like uh, it's not easy usually kids think that it's you know it's all very complicated when you talk about science experiment experiments everything but this dyi book will just you know change that and uh, i really want to see all that uh, congrats to all of you again and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity yeah yes thank you samta thank you it was really the passion that our guest speakers put into the platform that has made it grow to 120 sessions honestly i don't think snehal and i had 120 things science topics we could talk about so it's really a guest scientist driven platform thank you so much uh, all right yes nagraj yeah. so we have professor nagraj also joining us from iser pune and for those of you who attended our sessions you might remember um the tts session that we had on the matrix of our body so thank you for again for joining us nagraj and over to you thank you thank you so much and uh, i come to you from the wild west as suren put it uh, you know uh, i i'm in iser pune which is not very far from pune university but the you know from the time that suren's been here you know the city has grown and and this campus is now very much a, a part of pune as well um i first of all congratulations to uh, the team um, of tts um i i think i've been um, involved in some form or the other from the time this uh, you know this initiative was uh, was conceived um, and um, snehal is is a former student and i'm particularly proud of the fact that um, you know she's gone on to do this i i think this is what um, as a as a teacher i think you you want your students to uh, carry ideas from the place they come from um and and do things with them right and um and i think uh, for me uh, the interest in science uh, was largely initiated by teachers exceptional teachers who you know throughout life you run into um who have made uh, these subjects uh, you know exciting interesting in a way that um, now made you think that okay this is something i want to know more about um and um, i think one of the interesting fallouts of the pandemic for all of us has been that we now evolved methods of communication that maybe we would not have explored before um i think these zoom meetings are a terrific example of this um and um every situation can be turned to our advantage um and uh, an initiative like this is actually a good example of that that you know um it has brought people from across the country across the globe um to students from uh, across the country and the globe as well right and um, and so the opportunity to bring students scientists uh, together uh, in this format 
uh, is what I find quite remarkable uh, that they've been able to do. And like all other things in life, um, consistency is probably what matters the most. It's what is very difficult to achieve. Um, and the fact that they have straight, stayed true to the cause and done this over the last uh, many years and will continue, um, I think is, is, is really commendable. I think uh, with time, the impact of a program like this is measured by, um, you know, the ability to sustain. And, uh, you know, I know so many people, so many students who uh, heard, uh, you know, one or more of these. And, and the fact that all of this is cataloged in, in YouTube allows for this repository to be available over time as well. So, um, yeah, so my <laughs> motivation in life to do science has been curiosity. It's always been this way. Um, and, and there are new things to discover as long as you stay curious. So, so my hope is that uh, this is part of that process that um, that TTS also encourages, uh, you know, students to be uh, curious, to ask questions, um, you know, and um, and keep that curiosity uh, alive, right? So, congratulations again, and I'm very thrilled to be here. And I I've gone through the book, and and it's it's quite a remarkable accomplishment and and um, I think to have thought of it to have wanted to kind of go beyond what they were doing um, and do new things uh, I think is also a true trait of a of a scientist or a scientific mind so good luck and I look forward to seeing more creative things uh, you know that you guys will come up with <laughs> Thank you so much, Nagaraj. Thank you to all our three uh, science professionals so far. And that's, that's, that's some pressure. But, you know, we'll try and live up to it. So thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, all right. We'll move on. Yes. Yarni, welcome. Yes. So thank you, Yarni, for joining us all the way from Germany. Um, and for, again, those of you who attended our sessions before, Yarni had a wonderful session on genomics as well. Um, that everybody really enjoyed and there were again tons of questions so thank you for joining us Yarini. yeah uh, thank you I'm basically delighted to see you all again in the platform and in the book launching uh, program it is a good it's a great milestone in fact so congratulations to the team and I really like the book you know the animations is so high quality and then the way the contents were organized it starts from basic science. I shouldn't reveal too much. But yeah, it starts with the basic science to the biotechnological application and all the way to the um, environmental science. It sort of motivates young minds to take responsibility and then play a crucial role in future maintaining health of the ecosystem. So I really appreciate the thoughts when a lot of thoughts went into organizing and what to choose to be hands on. So. Yeah, um, uh, I am basically a kind of a gradu biotechnology graduate. Right now I'm doing metagenomics computational biology. So recent times we all now realize that the microorganisms play dominant roles in not only maintaining ecosystems, but also human health and so on. And this could be witnessed in the TTA sessions. So many webinars were pertaining to microbiological research, right? So even in one of the hands-on section, this with the study of microorganisms. So I study with the light of uh, genomic data. Uh, the reason why I chose uh, science is that doing research is a kind of way of living, you know? Uh, it is fun for those who wants to challenge themselves every day to be a better person than yesterday, you know? You are always in the line of constant learning and try to explore things and connect different ideas uh, to discover something novel. So at the end, you have a sense of satisfaction with the life that you live. That is what most important, you know? So in along this way, you basically learn to be simple. Uh, you learn simplicity and down to earth to learn things and then receive things uh, that you may not uh, appreciate and so on. So these are the good quality of being a good human being, you know. So it's, so this is why I sort of uh, happy to be in science field. 
and TTAS it gives a guidelines uh, to be a kind of how the research life looks like and then it but through these webinars they basically gives the uh, young minds the overview of how the research life um, looks like and it motivates the young minds to science perspective so i all the way, i wish you all the very best for the young minds to have a wonderful experience with the hands on book you have a really wonderful uh, content in it and i hope you will all have a great time experience ex experience in doing that and i also wish our tdas team for successes in the future activities thank, thank you thank you so much jerni that was very from the heart you know yeah. and really the takeaway is that you know that you know don't know so much it keeps you humble absolutely uh, and i remember your session on genomics when with the rope you actually showed the coiling and unwinding yeah so that made for quite some vibrant youtube content actually that video has got a lot of uh, attention thank yeah, you very much and there'll be some questions which we'll come to yes we we, we will come to that all right um, yes rafeek yes so we have rafeek joining us today and for all those who watched rafeek's session um you remember you must remember how amazingly creative and beautiful it was um it felt like we were in an art gallery but we were still learning science at the same time um and i think that was really amazing So thank you again for joining us, Rafi. Uh, thank you so much, Mehar. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. I am very happy and excited to share uh, this uh, uh, occasion with all all the people that we have here. First of all, let me tell you uh, somewhere in two thousand seventeen or something, I was uh, talking to one of my friends. Like uh, there should be having some uh, system in India where uh, uh, scientists can. connect with a uh, young kids like it was a casual chat but we th had some discussion around or oh, it should can be like this can be like that and uh, we both got busy and uh, and a couple of years back uh, my friend uh, sent me a, a, a link uh, sharing it, it uh, a, a post from tts so from that point on i have been following tts tts is doing a beautiful job so to give an example even the font that you are seeing on the slide uh, was selected keeping the uh, idea that our young audience that we have here the young minds should like like everything from uh, from the base uh, to top is designed uh, keeping the idea that we should have uh, scientists of scientists of uh, tomorrow uh, through this platform okay great and also it started as a two man arm uh, two women army uh, their passion and now we can see that the whole nation is catching up uh, i was talking to the uh, uh, team of tts uh, tomorrow we will be having many scientists uh, talking about uh, that spark that we have we had a couple of stories here uh, tomorrow few scientists will be sharing that spark that i got from uh, uh, one of the story that i heard uh, during tts i can guarantee that it will happen okay so uh, so i'll quickly share uh, my story so that uh, some of you uh, who are really interested in uh, drawing and art might find a beautiful career option uh, so like uh, so okay so i did a masters in chemistry okay so some of you might be interested in drawing a uh, color uh, uh, doing uh, creating watercolor painting and so on so that is your passion right so the question is can you combine your passion with your the education in that you have in science right so i didn't know about this field so there is a field known as scientific illustration if you are interested in art design you can become a scientific illustrator so you can keep this idea in mind and go to google and search about it how can you become a scientific illustrator how can you learn these tools and how can you learn this all digital uh, techniques and so on so that's what i have been doing after graduation i told my professor sir i think i uh, i am interested very much interested in art uh, rather than going for uh, research so he gave me an opportunity to learn uh, how to create illustrations for research paper you might have seen many illustrations right for example we had a pandemic uh, so we saw drawing of covid virus so you might thought who make these illustrations right it should it need it need to be scientifically accurate first of all the person who create that drawing 
should know what is the science behind that, what are the proteins there, how the genetic materials is there, how much protein is there, and so on. Then they create those illustrations, those drawings, right? So that person know how to draw as well as how to uh, understand research uh, findings and outputs. So if you are really interested in this area, you can uh, uh, enhance your drawing skills and you can become a scientific illustrator. So many of the uh, uh, speakers that we have, for example, uh, uh, when Professor Surendra talked, you could see that uh, childlike enthusiasm in even such a senior person like that. And also I, I used to work at ISER Pune, I, I used to hear many creative active projects are going on led by Professor Nagaraj. So what I'm trying to say, even uh, Ridhika is here, she's also running a startup along with uh, her PhD. And, and also uh, Samatha, uh, there was a uh, uh, workshop happened at ISER uh, Trivandro. So, so I'm right now working full time as a science illustrator. So for example, a PhD researcher published uh, his or her research paper and they think okay we need a beautiful drawing talking about whatever we found so they will be reaching out to me and i will work with them i will understand what their research is and we will create an illustration so that 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 was what i was doing over this uh, couple of years like over six years so many people started reaching out and uh, asking can we conduct a workshop so that we also can learn this digital tool so we used to conduct workshops so we conducted a workshop at icer trivandrum a few months back so we had many uh, phd students talking about their research work so there we had some of the so everybody talked about their research work like uh, with power powerpoint and all as she presented her research work using a guitar so she did it in a different way so what i'm trying to say is all the uh, uh, speakers that we have here are creative in different different areas so so i'll highly encourage you to note down all the names and go to their website and uh, write down their emails and uh, build a friendship with them send a hi they will be happy more than happy to reply you back so yeah uh, thank, you. thank you so thank much you, everyone thank yeah. you and uh, yes our guest speakers always do keep in touch when I uh, young participants uh, email them. So thank you very much for rem reminding us of that. Thank you. We'll get back. We are having some questions filter in, but we'll take them in a bit. Uh, Ritika, welcome. Thank you for joining us across the world, across time zones. And we look forward to hearing from you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. It's such an honor to be on a panel with people I've always looked up to and I've learned from constantly over the past few years. And uh, thank you to all the uh, young people who have joined us today. And um, it's, uh, it's really exciting to be here. I will quickly introduce myself. I'm Jitika. I am doing a master's in neuroscience at Oxford. And before this, I um, graduated with a degree in zoology from the University of Delhi. And um, I think I am the, or the uh, person on the panel who's kind of closest to your uh, age group because I got out of school in 2019. So yeah, I, I mean, I remember. <laughs> Uh, what inspired me back then. Uh, so like a not so nice kid, I used to watch a lot of television. I used to come back from school and sit down to have lunch in front of the television, which is not good practice. So please don't do it. But um, <laughs> I did that. And I remember that uh, my favorite show, uh, even until like I was in 11th or 12th grade, which is not the best time to be watching cartoons but I still did it and I used to watch a show called Phineas and Ferb. Now if you're looking for cartoon recommendations please watch Phineas and Ferb because uh, it talks about the lives of two brothers who uh, basically are spending their summer vacation and during that time they make a lot of new scientific inventions and conduct all kinds of experiments with their friends and it's all in a setting that is fun and DIY which uh, really nicely connects with the ideas and the very essence of TTAS. Um, I mean I am 
not as young as you all are but I, even i've been following tts videos for so long because it's not just i think about um inspiring students to build a career in science but also just to be aware of science just to have uh, you know be able to question objectively be able to um realize that not everything that you are told in life has to be taken at face value you have to uh, go into the nitty gritties at the depth of everything in life that you see starting from science to politics to whatever information you consume on a day to day basis i think that is something that science teaches everybody irrespective of what profession or what subject you choose to study at school or ahead and uh, tts constantly reminds us um, as well as students at the very basic level that we must always remember this um i am quickly i'll just go through what i study i am studying neuroscience and uh, specifically neuroscience of sleep and torpor or sleep and hibernation and um, a until a few months back this was very fantastical and like, this idea of actually having an opportunity to do this was beyond my wildest dreams i never thought that it would materialize because um, not a lot of institutions have the kind of facilities required to study the ideas that i am exploring so um, but it did work out and uh, it worked out despite there being a pandemic and me not having access to lots of um, very cool equipment or microscopes so what i'm trying to say here is uh, building a scientific temperament coming up with research questions and um having the drive to make it happen does not have to be in a lab all the time you can do so much sitting at home and um going outside into the wilderness exploring looking at animals plants all kinds of living things and you can learn so much and observe so much and write down so much of scientific um results observations that even really cool people like big scientists will appreciate that kind of effort so please keep at it um if you're interested and um, this book the tts book the diy book is i think the best starting point because um so one of the experiments i won't tell you which you see it soon i'm going to try it after the session <laughs> because it's really 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 sure. exciting tell so us how it um, went. <laughs> yes i will mean, be, the, I mean, be the first to send us pictures Sure, sure, sure. Because uh, that's the only fruit I have here. It involves a fruit, so okay. I will uh, okay. start working with that. <laughs> so uh, please, please uh, try it out. Make it a fun activity that you do with your friends. Like um, invite people over. I have a friend now who is a biochemist, and uh, I've already told her that. to look i'm going to come back and this is one thing that i can't tell you right now but once it's released we are going to do this together so <laughs> it's it's all part of our plans make this a fun thing that you do together and mm -hmm. um yeah i think um uh, just just enjoy what these two uh, actually five wonderful women are doing um uh, i uh, just the passion with which they uh, conduct all of these sessions and bring this information to all of us irrespective of um, how young or not we are is so inspiring and i constantly i uh, keep in touch with everyone uh, through twitter and all kinds of social media and uh, looking at this makes me reaffirms my decisions in life to pursue a career in science or to go ahead in science because these are the people i want to be like when i grow up even thank you more. very much reza so, thank you that's thank you very so much tall shoes tall tall big shoes and words thank you so much we we <laughs> keep trying to fill them all right so i think now we can move to open q and a and uh, anyone can field the question i'll start with the first question that was asked which was abhay asked the question what do you do when an experiment fails a uh, fellow fellow scientist does that ever happen i don't uh, know so may i <laughs> sure anybody yes so uh, uh, experiments fail all the time because of several different reasons the first thing i used to do was to just leave the lab look at some game or some movie and you know just forget about the experiment because if you start thinking about it again and again you will probably not get the answer 
and then the next day go back and look at your uh, protocol and uh, chemicals and reagents and try to find out where some things could have gone wrong uh, but it, there is no guarantee that it will not fail again but one has to try again and again that is precisely why when you look at your phd thesis for example the total number of experiments would be about 10 and you would have taken some 6 years to do them Uh, because they fail and you modify and you improvise you don't get facilities you beg borrow steal steal part you should not do but the beg borrow chemicals <laughs> and so on so you know you have to just get out of that uh, you know atmosphere and do something different is what i used to do because otherwise you know you will never remember what you what has gone wrong uh, but it's part of the game i mean uh, very few experiments work and when work that is the excitement that every one of us strives for absolutely yes yes nagraj please yeah the the thing i wanted to mention is that there is nothing called a failed experiment uh, i keep telling this to my students i think every experiment teaches you something if it hasn't worked it has taught you something too uh, you know and and that's the way to look at this so and there are good experiments and there are good experiments so um, and um, so so you do an experiment thinking it's going to teach you something irrespective of whether it succeeds or fails and uh, many a times the failed experiments are what have led you eventually to the experiment that event that succeeds so so it's important for us to see it that way um, so so i do experiments and each experiment teaches me something some work some don't absolutely thank you yes that's that's perspective right so we can combine both perspectives do take our mind off it a bit and come back saying it never failed it taught me something and let's give it another shot with the new learnings um so ansh had these questions about what about longest science experiments and shortest science experiments how does that work what are some really long experiments that would just take years to come to some answer or some result what would they be like uh, anyone yes yes of, yes a couple of things sure. like biology for example people do experiments on evolution and for that they use the drosophila fruit fly drosophila and you study generations of drosophila by growing them in the lab for several years and you know how evolution happens so you actually see evolution happening in a multicellular organism in hundreds of generations that can be an experiment that you can do you can modify the experiment you can try playing around with evolution those kinds of experiments one can do in biology uh, there are uh, experiments in biology that people uh, may not be able to complete in one lifetime so they continue in different labs because you know this can be very lengthy experiments there are some strains of drosophila which have been grown for you know decades and the original scientist is no more there for example you know hela cells so helvet uh, the person from whom the cells were taken is no more but she survives in the form that hela cells have helped us understand so much about cell biology so much about biology in general uh, as i mentioned in the chat i got one hydra from pune university campus in the year 2000 and i wanted to see when it dies but hydra apparently is uh, immortal uh, so i still have that clone so it's 22 years now and i'm sure it will uh, be there when i i have already retired but even the next generation of uh, scientists will be looking at the same hydra and wondering how it can survive for so long so these are in biology in physics chemistry as i was looking at google quickly i have put some in chat box they run in hundreds of years so yeah the smallest experiment i don't remember i think it is when you when you drop the tube of the dna <laughs> <laughs> question does does the glass survive the fall <laughs> answer <laughs> immediate <laughs> all right uh, yes uh, ansh more about immortality and hydra will be there in professor kaskadi session yes yes ritika please go ahead yes uh, yeah i i just wanted to say like because uh, similar to ansh i was uh, googling this question a few days back <laughs> longest science experiment and the first result i got was the pitch drop experiment 
um the pitchdrop experiment and uh, also highlights another thing about what exactly do you mean by an experiment an experiment can be something so basic as well right now pitch is some uh, it's a fluid sort of a thing that is derived from tar uh, which is made used to build roads as well i think and this experiment basically was uh, they took pitch this item and they tried to drop it from one place so when you drop water from the top it comes down as drops right that's because it is very thin it's not that viscous but pitch is very high in viscosity so it's so high in viscosity it's so thick that it took like i think i remember it took um, what 5 years for the first drop to come down from point a to point b to fall from point a to point b and that was an experiment because it told us so much about the point to point moment to moment um, difference that that particular thing goes through in different temperature conditions in different environmental settings to just fall from one point to another to fall that distance in those conditions so a, an experiment in itself can be so many things right so True. you, you should True. always try to e even if it's something really simple you're trying to do if it takes one second or if it takes years if it tells you something new i think that also qualifies as an experiment yeah yes absolutely that was a really good example rutika thank you so much so i think what we'll do now is we wanted to take all of you through the book uh we wanted to show you what the book looks like um what are some key aspects to look for when you go through the book and where can you find all the information you need uh so we're going to do a quick run through of this um if you have any questions about the book itself please feel free to type them in the chat window and we can try and answer them so yeah, is that you and hear me good? now yes okay i got dropped off our own launch so yeah everything has to happen in this one hour and it is it's going as per plan let's leave it at that <laughs> so this is the front cover of the book designed by momita mazumdar who's right here that's the back cover with all the information on doctor scientist many iterations went into finalizing these covers and these are the contents of the book so we have 10 hands on activities ranging from microbes in a jar to extracting dna from banana to building a nuts and bolts model of dna climate change and even testing the classic tongue taste map and that's going to take you through how the research has changed from a classic tongue taste map to a newer findings and newer understanding of what uh, taste how taste is uh, sensed so where do you find this book so you go to the talk to a scientist website well we can all do that and then you go to a page that basically says hands on ebook and in that book you will find in there you will find the book that you can download uh greg snell is going to be a downloadable pdf pdf it's free and open to all and then how do you use the book uh pick a content after reading our letter to you pick a content and we have clickable links that will take you right to the first page of that activity so it's an ebook but we've tried to keep it as interactive as possible so you click on the name of the activity it will take you to the first page of the activity and up front it will tell you what are the resources you need they're all simple easy to obtain probably all within arms reach nevertheless we give that to you right there if there are any special things that involve heating or cutting then we put an icon that says do it with a grown up or internet search then you know you should use the internet in the presence of a grown up once you get the resources we have step by step very visual guidelines on how you can go about doing it you can do it with friends and family it will make for a nice fun family science night and at the end we also leave you with something which a scientist we want to do and want to share with you thinking about your results it's not just doing it it's also thinking about what you see and there we leave you with tables and uh, pointers that you can think about these not only tables there are also fun graphs that you can make now in an ebook the only way you can make the graph is by copying it on a paper or then printing a page you know just copy it let's save paper but you can we show you how you can plot your results into a graph uh, and we've also try to bring out indian elements in the book for example in the session on chromatography with spinach pigments we made you think about palak paneer and what pigments will you think about when you're taking a spoonful of palak paneer so you can enjoy that as you do the as you do the activity 
All right. So um, you can go to the clickable link on the website and start downloading soon. I believe Shriya, it's up there, right? Yes. Sounds very good. Okay. Go ahead, Sneha. Yeah. Yes. So the website will have the book up there at the end of today's session. So you can go there and download it. Um, and what we want the most out of all of this is that all of you actually enjoy the book. You enjoy doing all of these activities. Um, like Ritika said, you know, have a party with your friends um, just to do science activities and, you know, enjoy. You have 10 different activities to pick from. Um, like we said, there are so many graphs, tables, lots of information you can fill in, you can draw, you can note down your results. Um, and please take pictures of you doing the activity, all the results you see, your work, and anything related to the book. And please do send them to us if you would like us to see them. We will also be more than happy to feature them on our website um, after, of course, you give us permission to do that. All right. And with that, we just want to say thank you to everybody, all the guest speakers who have joined us today. Um, the entire science community who has been so supportive of TTS ever since we started. And especially all the young minds who kept showing up uh, every webinar uh, and have asked the most amazing questions here. Um, and all the families for being so supportive of all of these fun activities that we do. Um, especially with all our hands-on sessions. We've seen parents, families, everybody in the background scrambling about getting the ingredients ready, helping everybody, you know, do these activities. And it's been really, really fun to watch. So we really hope you enjoy this book. Um, and of course, a big thank you to all our funding sources that have helped us reach this stage in our journey.